Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. I want to show you what we just finished in the hand tool workshop. Uh, by the way, every Tuesday and Thursday we broadcast a half hour training episode where we build furniture starting from rough lumber and we finish it using nothing but hand tools, no power. In fact, in some cases, no sandpaper either, right from the hand plane. This is a 17th cent replica of a 17th century French Canadian traveler's chest. And I first saw this in Fine Woodwork Magazine back in the mid 80s and uh, fell in love with it. I've made one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is my seventh. Taught some classes doing it. This one I was a little more careful in because we were actually walking through the process step by step online. Now, I'll give you a little bit of a run through. We start off with big, thick northern white pine. This is uh, rough as it comes from the mill once it's been dried. It's three inches thick. Carefully try to select the grain so that the rings, as you see them on the end, follow the curvature of these panels. Now what we do is we first take that big block of wood and we have to make it dimensionally uh, perfect. That means flat, smooth and square on all six surfaces. So it's going to be eight and a quarter inches wide by approximately two and three quarter inches thick by 23 and three quarter inches long. And the reason it has to be squared up before you start is you can't do any of that after the fact because what we then do is we hollow it out. So this panel that you see running from here to here, this piece, we start off with a scrub plane, which is a uh, plane that has a fairly heavy, thick blade. It's curved round allows you to re remove a lot of stock quickly and we hollow out the inside and we get as close as we can. Now if you look at this closely this inside line or the inside surface, maybe if I open it up and you can see, this inside surface has to be really smooth and really close to being bang on this radius because when you cut the dovetails into this end piece that baseline you want a nice clean joint. So after we rough it out with the scrub plane, I then use this round bottom plane that I made and this is designed to match the radius of that inner radius and we get that as close to being perfect as possible. So now we've got a uh, squared up piece that is round on the inside and then we want this outside, we want it to end up finishing out as a half inch shell. So then we do the outside and we can do the outside with a regular plane because it's, this is nothing more than multiple facets to give you that curve. And then the end pieces are uh, one inch thick stock that we mill and again we do that so that it's flat, smooth and square on all six surfaces. Cut the dovetails. Now true to, uh, true to the time period, the adhesives they had weren't that great so in addition to a dovetail we also go in and drill a hole and put in a wooden dowel in order to help reinforce that joint. This was designed to be used as a uh, uh, 17th century suitcase. So the voyageur would carry his belongings in there, flat bottom would keep it from rolling around in the canoe. You know, the lock was a little more elaborate, but this is the one that we use. I can, I've actually used this in my uh, trips. I can get about four days worth of clothes in there, believe it or not. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit more. The top is a little smaller piece. Now these are through dovetails, but when it comes to the top, the grain structure is such that we have to do a half blind. That's why you don't see the ends of the pins coming through on this one. They're tucked in. It's finished with uh, tongue oil. There's several coats, except on the inside you don't want oil on your clothes, so that's left um, raw wood. As I said, there's no sanding, so it's, yeah, it's nice and smooth, but that comes right off of the hand plane. The bottom is a panel that floats, and by that I mean there's a groove, and we cut the groove using a uh, uh, a plane, it's not actually that one, but something similar where it's designed to go in and cut a single groove. The one I used was a quarter inch wide. So then this solid wood panel fits in a groove on the sides, on the ends, and it has to be allowed, allowed to move seasonally. In other words, wood is going to expand when the environment is more humid than the wood is as contains moisture. And as the environment dries out, then the wood's going to give off moisture and it's going to shrink. So you've got you can't restrict that or else something's going to split. So that's the bottom. Now the hardware. It's actually one of the harder parts. The first time I did this I actually made my own hardware. And then when I started teaching the class and I needed multiples of it, it wasn't possible to get all that done in a single week-long class. So 
So I had a friend who is a uh, fabricator of sorts make me up these, kind of rough, but that's the way we wanted them, crude. And then what I do at this point is I use a ball peen hammer on a uh, on a uh, anvil, and I take this metal and I shape it so that it's no longer flat here, but it tapers off. So as you look on the on the hinge, you can see how that just shapes down and just. And then we also have to make it fit the side of the panel so that it lays up there nicely. And then the nails, we make our own nails. We do all of that. What we do is we just take a piece of a regular nail and we shape it and pound it and beat the crap out of it until we have a head on it and it's long and tapered. Now, they didn't have screws to use, so the nails were clinched on the underside. And as ugly as it looks, well, that's the way it was done. These ones down underneath actually turned out much nicer because I was actually, when I was pounding them, I was able to turn the, to uh, uh, round them over and by driving it in here, drove the end in and it fished, finished off nicely. Which is nice because there's nothing in there to snag your clothes on. These top ones didn't turn out as nice as I would have liked, but really can't do much about it after the fact. And then the color. What we do is we soak these in, uh, in uh, uh, boiled linseed oil and then apply a torch to it on the back side until it burns off just enough of an oil then it leaves that nice patina on there that makes it look antique. And of course you got to line everything up perfectly. It's actually difficult to get these hinges just right because they are somewhat sloppy just because of the nature of them and you want them so that that when you put them on the lid fits nicely on the base and there's not a whole lot of adjusting you can do after the fact so you almost have to have a little bit of luck involved there and it would be nice to have the head sit a little bit lower but again I tried to do it as it would have been done so that's the 17th century french canadian travel chest now if that interests you we, uh, as I mentioned, we broadcast this and we make it available. Um, you can go to robsworkshop.com and it'll give you all the information on there. A membership for the hand tool workshop is $20 a month or you can pay for a year, which saves you 20%, would be $200 a year. And all of these episodes where we built this are stored on there. So you can retrieve them and watch them as many times as you want. There's actually several projects on there. This is probably our fifth or sixth, maybe even our seventh project that we've done. And I, meant, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is out of northern white pine. The idea was you wanted the case to be light enough so that you weren't having to lug the case around. You were actually carrying the contents. Uh, final thing I wanted to tell you was, oh, we have some hardware available as well. I have still lots of this left over. So if you uh, want to tackle this and you want some hardware and save yourself quite a bit of work, mind you, there's a lot of work to go in from getting from this to this. But if you're starting from scratch, there'd be even more. Anyway, if that, uh, if, like I said, if that interests you, check it out, robsworkshop.com, or you can go to my other website, which is robcosman.com, where we sell the tools that we make. Hope you enjoyed it.